not every good idea works. And exhibit A of this is Christops, the unicorn Porzingis, who didn't work in an almost literal sense. Mike Fisher reporting on the Dallas Mavericks and the NBA on trade deadline day. Dallas Mavericks made their big move, and it's kind of a reverse blockbuster. They did this just ahead of the Thursday NBA trade deadline. It involves Christoph Porzingis, who has missed the team's last five games due to knee soreness, who over the course of this season plays about 60% of the time. This is a continuation, of course, of the unavailability problem that has plagued him since he was with the Knicks uh, and plagued him after the blockbuster trade as a Maverick and plagued the Mavericks and plagued Mavericks fans, so frustrated by what could be if, but it never was. The Mavericks are trading Porzingis and a second round pick to the Washington Wizards. They get Spencer Dinwiddie, they get Davis Bertrands. For uh, practical purposes, this could be termed a double salary dump. Fat salaries are being moved here. And no, we're not just talking about KP and his bloat. The injury issues are being moved here, and we're not just talking about KP and his limp. If you don't like Porzingis' $35 million a year contract, you're probably not going to like Bertrand's $17 million a year contract. Uh, six foot ten Latvian is age 29. He is playing on a five-year $80 million contract. He is not quite at six points a game. He's not quite at two rebounds a game. He doesn't play for the Wizards quite 15 minutes a game. Ugh. So, no, that's probably not going to shove the Dallas playoff ometer in the right direction. You don't like Porzingis' injury woes. Well, you're probably not going to like the fact that the 6'5 Dinwiddie, 28 years old, coming off a torn ACL that he sustained last year, having a down year, averages of 12 points, four and a half rebounds, five and a half assists, with what we could politely term underwhelming scoring efficiency. Can that help the Dallas Mavericks playoff ometer? You have the right to be skeptical. Both teams are moving unfavorable salaries and guys with ailments who never quite fit in with their teams. Uh, Dinwiddie, the way we've termed it, was incompatible with Bradley Beal with the Wizards. And he was, of course, their marquee free agent addition. The seven foot three Porzingis, not incompatible necessarily this year with Luka Doncic. That conflict seems to have been calmed, maybe uh, under the direction of new coach Jason Kidd. And listen, 19 points a game and eight rebounds a game is fine, but not if you only play over the course of 209 games in the Mavericks employ, 134 games. Let me do it again for you. KP played 134 games out of 209 possible games. Uh, Bertans and Dinwiddie deserve their shot. And Dallas deserves its shot to get off of these contracts, which figure to be easier to do than Porzingis and escaping that contract, which was now a mistake. And amid the buyout rumors surrounding Goran Dragic, uh, Luca's buddy, maybe we ought to wait on that too before we make a final judgment on trade deadline day. But there is no denying. The Mavericks did this February 1st, 2019, with high hopes that this was going to be a Luca co-star, what became a Luca co-star situation, that never happened. The transcendent level of play of Luca was never matched by KP. That did rub KP the wrong way to some degree. Uh, the Mavericks, you'll remember, sent Dennis Smith Jr., DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, and two first-round picks to the Knicks to get KP. Tim Hardaway came here as part of that. He's now out for the year. He's the final remaining part of that trade that the Mavericks completed to acquire Porzingis from the Knicks. So in the end, the unicorn, they're not real. The plan never came to fruition. And the good idea never worked because Kristaps Porzingis too rarely worked. Fish.